Hi everyone, it's Robert Kuto, your favorite degree nutritionist and weight loss consultant for RC Nutrition Consulting. I know I have not been making a nutrition video for the last two weeks, but I've started my final grad class at my master's program. Yes, this is my final semester for my last uh, for my for my grad program in Auburn University. So I want to start the video by apologizing to all of my subscribers for not making a weekly video on a nutrition related topic. I would love to make the excuse that my college life and my personal life are pretty tricky to balance, but I'm going to be start making more videos on nutrition again on a weekly basis. I will be making videos on vitamins and minerals and hopefully listen to my viewers to suggest topics. For those who are new to my YouTube channel, I want to welcome you to my channel and please feel free to view any of my previous nutrition related videos. And I'm confident that some of the videos may challenge the current thoughts and opinions on, on popular topics in society. But I hope to change the way we view nutrition as a whole. My, view, my, my video's purpose is to educate my subscribers on nutrition information and help them separate facts from fads or fiction. Lastly, do not hesitate to get your voice heard on a video suggestion. I welcome all of my subscribers to provide any valid nutrition related topic and I will construct a video around the topic. So with that said, let's take another bite off a nutrition related topic. So today we're going to be discussing thiamin, or simply known as vitamin B1, and how essential this vitamin is for our everyday living. So Dr. Uh, Jokobus, a Dutch physician and a pioneer of tropical medicine, provided the medical description of beriberi, and was responsible for naming disease in 1630. By 1911, Casimir Funk isolated the dietary growth factor in rice polishing, which cured beriberi in its test subjects and was called thymalanine. 25 years later, Robert, Do uh, Dr. Robert Williams synthesized vitamin B1 and named it thymine. With these researchers work in the field, nutrition professionals are capable of understanding thymine's importance for individuals. Thymine is an essential micronutrient for carbohydrate and neural function in humans, and deficiencies may result in nerve and heart disease called beriberi. See, 80% of thymine in the body is in its biological active form, a thymine diphosphate, or TDB, which is an essential coenzyme required in the citric acid cycles, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, and the alpha cleoglutarate dehydrogenase complex to extract energy for the nerve and heart cells from food. TDB is also an essential coenzyme for transketolase reactions of hexylmonophosphate shunt, leading to the formation of air, uh, energy carriers. Deficiency in thiamine is possible in human populations if we do not have the adequate caloric intake from a variety of foods which will ensure proper thiamine uh, intake. Deficiencies in thiamine may be a result from high, refined, unfortified carbohydrate foods and alcoholism which are the primary causes in the United States. Also, mass consumption of thymin antagonists and chronic use of certain medications are possibly some other causes for thymine deficiency in the United States as well, too. The most common symptoms of thymine deficiency are both wet, dry, and wet beriberi, infantile beriberi, and wichernick korsunoff syndrome. Symptoms range from swelling, depression, de uh, degeneration of myelin sheets, around nerve fibers are found in dry beriberi. And then you can find edema, trachycardia, weakened heart muscle, car uh, cardiac enlargement, and wet beriberi. And many of these symptoms are common among older adults, alcoholics, and chronic deficiencies in teens and adolescents. Historically, nutrition uh, professionals observed a thymine deficiency which is associated with populations with massive polished rice consumption. Polish rice uh, doesn't have a lot of thiamine due to the milling and, de and de germing process of the grain. See, thiamine is not just found in carbohydrates such as rice. Thiamine is also found in low concentrations and, and wide varieties of foods. And all fruits are low in thiamine. All vegetables are low except soybeans, beans, and peas, and these have a moderate amount of thiamine. Nuts and grains have a moderate amount of thiamine, and sadly the germ and bran is high in thiamine, but is removed in the milling process. White flour must be enriched and fortified with thiamine and other nutrients. For meat lovers, all meats, such as chicken, beef, turkey, have a moderate amount of thiamine. 
but pork has the very high amount of thiamine, 1.1 milligrams per day. I mean 1.1 milligrams per 4 ounces. And unfortunately, fish and other seafoods have a low amount of thiamine. And lastly, all dairy have a little to moderate amount of thiamine depending on the fortification and the type of food product. So if you notice that thiamine uh, content in seafood is low because of the thiaminase, a enzyme that metabolizes or breaks down thiamine into two molecular parts for human energy utilization. Excessive consumption of raw fish and shellfish provides a substantial probability of thiamine being destroyed by thiaminase content in seafood. Skipjack tuna has around 10,000 milligrams of thiaminase, which can destroy 100 grams of thiamine in an hour. This rate can cause some conflicts in thiamine absorption and utilization for human carbohydrate metabolism. So let's talk about the RDA, or the Reference Dietary Allowance, for thiamine, and put in perspective of how much individuals need to put a balance on the body's carbohydrate metabolism and neural function. So first, infants between the age of 0 to 12 months have an RDA of 0.2 to 0.3 milligrams per day. By the age of 1 to 11, thiamine requirements gradually increase from 0.5 to 0.9 milligrams per day. And for women between 14 to 18, have 1.0 milligrams per day. Adult women above the age of 19 will have a need to obtain around 1.1 milligrams per day, and adult males above the age of 14 will need to get around 1.2 milligrams per day. So thiamine requirements are going to be based on body uh, size difference and energy needs between males and, and females. Pregnant and lactating women need around 1.4 to 1.5 milligrams per day, and amazingly there's no known uh, toxicity level or upper limits for large oral thiamine intake. So in my, view, view, uh, my video's uh, conclusion, vitamin B1 contributes to a body's energy utilization and met metabolism. Individuals who suffer from alcoholism or do not have enough fortified products for thiamine are the most risk for thiamine deficiency. Thiamine deficiency re results in the systems previously explained in my video. I want to encourage all my viewers and subscribers to be aware of the thiamine in the fortified food products, but do not feel scared about not getting enough in the diet. It's very rare. But I want to thank all of my viewers and subscribers who took the time to watch my video on Simon. Please make sure to subscribe and view my other uh, nutrition related videos on my channel. So thanks again. I hope everyone has a nice day and look forward to all of my videos and, and my uh, little clips on my business channel at RC Nutrition Consulting. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Have a nice day.